Welcome back to Long Range Productions, your video source for reloading and shooting. Now today we have something a little bit different for you, still in the realm of reloading. What we're going to do, because it gets so much, so much flack, we are going to compare the Hornady Auto Charge. Uh, we currently have it set at 41.5 grains. I don't know if it'll focus on that screen. It looks a little washed out. But uh, yeah, that is set at 41.5 41.5 grains of Hodgden H4350. And we have an assortment of mechanical scales over here. So the scales that we have, we have my least favorite scale in the whole world when it comes to a mechanical scale. And I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. But the Lee, um, I just really don't like it. Uh, we have an RCBS 505, right, made by O House. These are proven, well proven to be excellent scales, very accurate uh, and very reliable. Then we have another O House, this one, and a Lyman guys. This is the Lyman O House M5. Uh, this scale is my, my go to scale when it comes to precision reloading. There is a lot of control to be had and resolution to be had on this scale and uh, it's, it's just extremely repeatable it's accurate it's reliable I I just I can't say enough good things about this scale if you want to get into a mechanical scale look into the old Lyman M5s or the RCBS 1010s um, for all intents and purposes they are the same uh, I don't know if O House still makes a similar version. I believe they do, but uh, don't quote me, basically. So anyways, as you can see, getting back to the video here, everything is zeroed out, right? Everything is zeroed out. The Lyman is, or the, the Lee is just a little bit low. I'll continue to play with that and get it perfectly zeroed. And then we also have a old Hornady GS 1000. I've had this scale for probably 10 years now. Um, it's a pretty decent scale for what it is. I don't trust it implicitly because it is old and it does drift a bit, but we're going to verify everything with this scale as well. So we have the scale that's built into the auto charge. We have the Lee we have the RCBS 505 and we have the Lyman 1010. So let's see how accurate the auto charge actually can be. Okay, so as you can see, we do have the Lee zeroed out now. Um, it is kind of a pain because you have a weight right here that you need to screw in and screw out in order to get it zeroed out. So now, we are going to set this to 41.5 grains. Uh, that's what we have the, uh, the auto charge set to. So to do that, there is a stainless steel ball bearing right here and we need to move that over to 40. I just use an old depriming tool. So works pretty well for me for moving that around without having to upset everything. And then we have to go through right here, and it'll read full grains here, and then the tenths, you'll see a white line right here for when you get to the tenth. So the white line will pop up right above the tenth indicator. So let's go ahead and adjust that. So jump to two. You know, I'm going to do this off camera because it's a little awkward, but I will get it set and I will show you. Okay, so I actually had to change lenses here to show you exactly what it looks like when it's, it's set up. So you can see right here, it says 1. It's halfway technically between the 1 and the 2, which makes sense because it is... 1.5 grains or 41.5 grains and then you can see a white line 
right there above the 5. And that is what we are looking at. Now, you can also kind of see white lines against the 4. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things I really don't like about this scale is that it's not as precise as the other offerings from some of the other companies. The Lee is made to a certain price point and it kind of shows it, it's, it's serviceable, but it's not ideal. So let's move on to the other ones. Let's get those set and I'll show you how those work. All right, moving on to the RCBS 505 made by Lyman. We can see it's zeroed out right now, which is perfect. And we are gonna set it to 41.5 grains. So here you have your tenths of a grain. Right here you have your whole grains. And right here you have your tens of grains. So we are going to just go four hash marks over. That puts it at 40. We're gonna go one hash mark here. And we're gonna go point five right there. So you can see how much easier that was and how much easier it is to read and verify. There we go, it's perfectly on the, uh, it's in the divot for, for half. So you can see how much easier that really is to set up than the, uh, than the, the Lee. So now let's take a look at the Lyman uh, M5. So very similar, except you have ha uh, five grain increments on the main beam, and then you have tenths and holes on the uh, external beam or auxiliary beam, the, the, the fine scale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come, so that would be 25. So two hash marks before the 50, that puts it at 40. And over here we're gonna come 1.5. Keep that centered. So it's 41.5. So 41.5. Easy peasy on that one. Very, very simple, very easy, very accurate. So let's get to throwing some loads and we will see how accurate that Hornady Auto Charge actually is. All right, so here we are with the Hornady Lock and Load. We have 41.5 grains as the target. Uh, it is currently teared out. I do have it in slow mode and it is in manual. So let's go ahead and hit dispense. So let it dispense the powder. And we will check this against the mechanical scales. All right, so we are right at 41.5 grains dispensed. So we will check that first in the Lee. We'll get the camera reset up and then we'll go ahead and move that pan and dump it into the Lee pan. All right, so straight from the Hornady auto charge, we're going to drop it directly in the Lee scales pan. And it looked like it jumped right up to zero. So that was actually pretty good. It did look like it hung up a little bit, so I'm just going to tap it and let it resettle. And it settled just a tad low, actually. So that's actually reading less than 41.5. That's fairly interesting. So from there, we shall move it back over, or move it over, rather, to the RCBS 505. So because of my limited workspace for this, we're actually peering over the Lyman uh, M5 to look at the RCBS 505. So I'm taking it directly from the Lyman pan. We're gonna just drop it directly into our CBS 505 pan. See how that does. And this actually reads pretty dead on. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. Oh, come on camera, focus. There we go. So that is just about perfect. I 
Couldn't ask for anything more. That is 41.5 grains. I trust that scale. I know that scale. And I know that if it reads 41.5 grains, it is actually 41.5 grains. Even more so, let's double check it on the Lyman. So I'm taking it directly from the pan on the RCBS. I'm dropping it directly in the Lyman M5 pan. I'm actually going to use this on the digital scale. So it looks like we are 100% dead on accurate. Perfect, right at 41.5 according to the mechanical scales from O House. So now let me take you over to the uh, the Hornady GS1000. And so you can see that the Hornady is currently teared out at zero. Let's move it over here. See what that says. So this is actually reading 41.4. And, oh, it just jumped to 41.5. So now you can see why I don't really trust this. It's right in between 41.4 and 41.5. But let's move it back over to the uh, Hornady Auto Charge and see what it says there. Now it's jumping to 41.6. This is good for reference, this scale. I use for referencing bullet weights more than I do anything else or for quick uh, checking case weights uh, to sort them into batches. I do not use this scale for powder charges because you can see it, it, it already drifted up from 41.4 is what it initially read to 41.5 and now it's at 41.6. And if we let it on here, long enough, I can almost guarantee you that it would probably drift up to 41.7 or different. You can see it's now it's jumping between 41.6 and 41.5. It's an old scale. Like I said, I don't use it for precision work, mainly just to batch brass. All right, here we are back at the Hornady Auto Charge. So I'm going to take the same pan of powder and drop it right into the pen on the auto charge and it reads exactly 41.5 so in my mind this is pretty dependable um, are you going to get kernel perfect charges every time no but that's not what this is designed for this is really designed for convenience I use it a lot for working up loads doing ladder tests and such loading in 0.3 grain increments or if I have a match tomorrow it's 10 o'clock at night and I need to bust out 80 or 90 rounds, I will use this because I find nodes that are within 0.3 grains typically. I choose right in the middle of two loads that are 0.3 grains that are pretty similar in velocity. So, and, and I'll do another video on that later. So look forward to that. But the nice thing about that is if this does sh shoot a tenth higher, a tenth low, it's not going to affect my muzzle velocity much to notice it down range within a thousand yards typically. So it may be one or two feet per second off at the muzzle. It's not going to be a huge, huge jump. So there you go. Hornady Auto Charge. It gets a lot of flack, but it is pretty darn accurate. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this content, please feel free to uh, subscribe and share with your friends. And we will see you next time.